Hello friends and welcome back. Today we will understand two important aspects of internal control systems within an organization. The testing of control design and testing of operating effectiveness. We will also explore how these tests are conducted during an audit along with some examples. Control design and operating effectiveness are two critical aspects in the context of risk management financial reporting and regulatory compliance. Organizations need to ensure that controls are not only well designed but also effectively implemented and maintained. The test of design evaluates whether the control as described by the organization has been properly established and put in place. It is a point in time assessment to answer the question whether the process in its current state and form is effective to manage risk. For example, the company purchasing policy does not require more than one vendor and quotations to evaluate and select vendors, and no approvals by head of department of the purchase. The design has failed, even if you test. Another example is if a company states that they conduct background checks on all new hires an auditor would confirm this by checking if a background check was conducted on a recently hired employee. If confirmed, the auditor can validate that the control has been designed as stated. Another example could be controls around the change management process. If an organization claims they have a process to ensure all changes made to their production system are authorized, the design of this could be tested. The auditor would validate that for a recent change, the change was reviewed, tested and approved by appropriate board. I have made a separate video on change management and what are the things to check as an auditor, what are different type of changes which you can go and watch for better understanding. The test of effectiveness checks whether a control operated consistently over a period of time in the past and typically it is taken as 12 months. It involves sample testing and considers the control's ongoing performance. In sample testing, instead of examining every single transaction, a subset sample is selected from total transactions for evaluation. Let's understand it with an example. Consider the scenario where the company's purchasing policy requires more than three vendor quotations for every purchase which exceeds more than 50,000. An auditor would examine a sample of transactions over a certain period, typically the last 12 months, where purchases have exceeded more than 50,000. If the auditor finds that for all the transactions in the sample, the company consistently obtained more than three vendor quotations as required by the policy, then the control's operating effectiveness is confirmed. This means the control has been operating as designed and intended. Taking another example, to test the operating effectiveness of the background check control, the auditor would confirm that a background check had been conducted for each sample new hire. By looking back in time and testing a sample of new hires that were hired in the last 12 months, we can test the operation of the control. Hence, this sample testing method can identify whether the control operated effectively and consistently over that period of time. And in the test of design, we checked that for only one hire at a point in time, right? Similar example for change management, if we want to test the operating effectiveness of the same control, again, we would have to do the sample testing. The auditor would obtain a population, a list of all the system changes that occurred during that audit window, then they would select sample of changes from that population. For each sample change selected, the auditor would look to confirm that all the key controls are there in the process, which is peer review, testing and approval of all the changes. Let's take an example where test of design and test of operative effectiveness has failed. Consider an organization that processes vendor invoices. They have a control where the same person is responsible for both approving invoices and making the payments. 
this lack of segregation of duties violates sod principles since the control allows a single individual to initiate approve and execute payments auditor identifies this design flaw during the testing and reports it as a failed test of design in this scenario the control is not designed properly and it is ineffective even if it is perfectly executed continuing with the same vendor invoice process let's assume the organization has a well designed control invoices are approved by one person a and payments are executed by another person b this design adheres to segregation of duties principles however during the operating effectiveness test the auditor selects a sample of invoices and payments and there are instances where the same person approver a has approved the invoices and executed the payments so this violates the controls intended operation right in this case the control is well designed but its execution falls short right a perfect example of lack of segregation is also collapse of bearings bank i have made a detailed video which you can go and watch for better understanding so a field test of design highlights flaw in control conception while a failed test of operating effectiveness reveals issue in control execution so to wrap it up testing the design of a control is a point in time test while testing the operating effectiveness of a internal control is testing the control operation over a period of time type 1 report where only the design of controls are tested requires less time and effort as compared to type 2 report which tests the operating effectiveness of controls over a period of time so i hope you have understood these important aspects of internal control systems within an organization if you find value from this video please share it with your friends and subscribe to this channel for more such informative videos consider joining me on linkedin thank you see you soon with another topic another video bye bye thank you